uh, Chris Greenhill, um, when did you come to Harlow and why did you come to Harlow? Uh, we moved to Harlow in 1981 and the reason was that I would got a job here in 1980, mid-80, as a photographer working with what was then STL, it's the labs on London Road which became Nortel and of course now is the, uh, the site of the Enterprise Zone. And, and where did where you come from? I come from North London, from Enfield, so very much a Londoner born and bred. My family, long history in London, so this was a, a, a new departure, albeit not that far. So, so how, how old are you when you moved to Harlow? Uh, I would have been 28. Uh, uh, 28, so yeah. how did you feel as a 28 year old moving up to Harlow, Newtown? I think it's different now to if it, uh, as it was then, because it did. It, I'd never been to Harlow before. Well, once actually, I'd come to do a judge a photographic competition, actually, <laughs> bizarrely. Um, but that was the only time we'd ever been here, and I think the the lack of the M25 made a big difference there. That it did kind of feel somewhere completely completely different. So it wasn't a natural location. So um, in terms of how it felt. Um, some marked differences. Uh, I think one was the fact that everywhere was obviously planned out. In London, it, um, buildings, developments are very organic, so you get a whole hodgepodge of different types of architecture together. Uh, roads just off of high roads, you don't have that here. It's, you know, we had the hatches in the town centre. So it felt very planned and very different. The green wedges obviously were a, a real change, um, and so there was greenery everywhere, so that was, that was good. I think one of the other things which I noticed quite soon, or we both did, was the, there was this sense of a bit more of a unified community. And I think that was partly just because it was bounded by countryside, so there was a natural geographical barrier around the town, whereas in London everything tends to bleed into everything else really. So there was a this kind of sense of a more of a defined community. And when you moved here, did you do you feel you got invol involved in the community at all? Um, not, not not particularly any in any huge way. Um, there was quite a big community actually at work, so my time was very much spent at work and I had about three jobs when I started and I was going back to teach up in uh, uh, Paddington, teach photography. So I can't, my time was filled, we had a, uh, a young child, our, our daughter was, was just one when we moved so it was very much about family life and working really. Um, and which part of town were you living in then? We were living off Parandon Road. Yeah. So um, I think the community side of it grew more over time, um, less through us initially and perhaps more through the kids um, growing up in their own community. But the job I had at, at Nortel ultimately involved partly being or, or being responsible for community relations and that got you engaged with different organisations around the town so that got me a bit more connected. In latter years certainly as, as my daughters have grown up um, and seen the, the huge collection of friends they've got, huge circles of friends, both of them, and their husbands in the town. You, there is very much a sense of community through them as well. So it's, um, I think that, that whole community thing has, has grown over the years, actually, in, in my mind. Was your work important to you? Yeah, yeah, very much so. Uh, the labs were a fantastic place to work. Very, very special place. I mean, there's the, obviously the the history that that people tend to know about, which is the birthplace of optical communications. But it was much more than that. Uh, the labs that I went to initially was a real sort of whole spectrum of different technologies. And in those days, there was more of a focus on developing something, researching, or oh, sorry, researching something first, and then deciding how can we develop it. That got switched to a, a small R, as in research, and a large D, as in development, more with the Nortel days. 
So in those early days, you could be working on all sorts of things. Um, yes, optical fibre, communications, radio, um, materials, science. They even had a, a whole range of different um, greenhouses out the back, which were where they were developing control release glass, which was a, a sort of a spin out of uh, telecoms material science into this glass that dissolved and they said what can we do with <laughs> glass that dissolves well if you put insecticide in, into it um, you can you know, deal with, with sort of unwanted um, germs and, and uh, bacteria. And how long were you, were you there at Nortel? Uh, 22 years altogether left in the uh, beginning of 20, 2002. And what have you been doing since then? Since then, I've been doing uh, business consultancy, uh, working with large companies, small companies, public sector. But in recent years, it's really been focused much more on charities and helping charities become better businesses. So moving them more towards the uh, social enterprise type of model, uh, rather than de being dependent on grants and donations. So you've got sort of a mixed income. There because nowadays the grants are going, uh, they'll always be around, but the, the the number of grants and their value is has diminished over over the years. And you live here. We are in, in Church Langley. Mm. Um, does that does that have a sense of community? Do you think? Uh, um, it's always a bit of a moot point, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's the, it is it is a bit of a a, a satellite sort of collection of houses and we've got great neighbours uh, where I live um, but I don't think it's the same sort of community that you might find in the village for instance because there isn't that common endeavour in a sense in a, in a village there's you know a, a very small number of you and access to not not so many immediate resources whereas here it's, it's people some some people I'm sure on Church Langley would more or less treat it as a dormitory um, and work in London and work outside. So that's that's a natural thing. But I think it's Church Langley is is just part of the Harlow, as far as I'm concerned. And what what do you think of the changes that are coming in Harlow with say you know the Science Park, yeah. Junction Seven A, the, the planning applications right there on the periphery of Harlow? Um, um, do you think these are these are positive? These are good things? Hugely, hugely. I mean, not all of them. Um, you know, there's some issues with with some things and some obstacles that will need to be dealt with. But in terms of direction of travel, I think it's hugely positive, hugely positive. And it, I think one of the the issues that that Harlow has always had is about image. Um, and some of that has been rooted in deprivation, and there are areas of deprivation in Harlow. It's true. But I liken it. A bit to when you talk to people from from Harlow, it's a bit like having a wayward child. It's okay. You 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 recognise that there are these imperfections and things which need to be, you know, addressed. But you don't want people from outside telling you that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's actually, I firmly believe it's actually actually much better living here than people from outside of the area sometimes perceive. I sort of made the point to somebody earlier that I think Harlow might have about four moaning pages on Facebook and they might say, well, at least we care enough to moan. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and, 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 and Facebook is great, <laughs> is great for that, for, great for our community. It might be a, you know, a global platform, but actually the, the real purpose of it for most people is, is much more ge geographically local, you know, where people are sort of um, sharing stuff, which is, a, which is just local stuff, you know. Um, well, I think, you know, getting back to your point about sort of things that are happening now, I think that's, that's the bit. We, we can't and shouldn't try and compete with places which have heritage and history going back hundreds of, of years. Um, although there is, there's bits of that in the town, the, I think the, the joy of, of Harlow is, is the way that it has evolved and, and continually evolves over time and takes on new challenges and there's a vibrancy about the genuine vibrancy about some of the things that are happening in, in the town. Because you would agree you can see them actually happening, you know sometimes with regeneration agendas some yeah. things get in development hell or planning morasses but actually you've seen things, if, if something like Public Health England. 
moving yeah, here. Absolutely. They are moving, you know, we've been to the turning of the turf, or that's yeah. important is for people to see those changes. Yeah, absolutely. And and yesterday I was at a Chamber of Commerce meeting at the new rugby club. And what did you think of that? Fantastic. I mean, a really nice building, um, good vista across the, you know, the rugby pitches, and a, just a real good vibe in terms of you know the future of that of that club and now much more in the center of the town actually it was on the periphery and given that we've got church langley and new hall developing and new hall developing further geographically it sat fairly well in the center of the town brilliant yeah so thing, things like that very very positive the harlow 70 activities that are being uh, going on the carnival, you, you know, earlier you mentioned the scooter ride out, things like that. They're, they're good things and people are sort of doing things. Um, it's not as if you have to take part in all of those things, but the fact that they're going on actually is a feel-good factor in itself. And I think where we are uh, within the UK, where we sit in the UK, with access to London, access to Europe, motorways, train we've got urban we've got countryside it's, it's a fantastic mix so you're glad you came in glad you stayed yep i certainly am